scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The subject of wealth and prosperity, Pastor, is one that I think respectfully speaking i think it may be one of the most controversial subjects in the body of christ every time we mention the word rich prosper wealth money there's such a a negative atmosphere that just rises even from the most well-meaning believers is as though it does something to them please listen carefully and so we have such we have such divide along this subject there are people for instance who frown and vocally propose that a life of mediocrity a life that is that does not have the blessing of god that that is such a template for a believer and they support it with scripture there are people who are obsessed about wealth everything their entire life is surrounded by money everything is money they will throw away jesus a thousand times to keep money you see and so because of this i think there has been most preachers do not want to talk about the subject of money even though they know that a good shepherd would have to train and teach and mentor his people along that lines but the pain the backlash the trouble the controversies that surround this area most people will just leave it silent and hope that people will find their way just figure out their way so it takes a lot of love and courage from a man of god like your pastor to boldly come up and say you know what i am willing to make sure that you learn these principles to stop shadow boxing i am showing you the pathway designed by god i'm unveiling to you the economic system of the kingdom are we together now yes sir so i want us to discuss a few thoughts tonight and then we'll pray i confess to you that there's so much like your pastor i believe would have taught you here and would have told you there is so much around the subject of finance that in truth not even a month can exhaust it there are many dimensions to it and the goal is not to do everything but just to select a few vitals since i'm laying the foundation to just trust god for grace as other servants of god come to build all to the end that we become empowered but i pray for you in the name of jesus that through this conference you will reject poverty that once and for all you will wave it goodbye and insist that it waves you back in the name of jesus christ so pray for one minute whilst you are sitting lord my heart is opened my understanding is fruitful in the name of jesus is someone praying pray it from the depth of your heart Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Make sure you are praying. Grant us grace, O God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Just two scriptures and then we'll begin to build. First Chronicles chapter 29, please. First Chronicles chapter 29. First Chronicles chapter 29. From verse 11. First Chronicles 29 and verse 11. Let's just have KJV. Please look up and we'll read it together. Ready? Please read. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Uh -huh. For all that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Reading to 13, 12. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thy hand is power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great. Ah, please keep this scripture. Look at what you are reading carefully. That both riches and honor come from you. And that in your hand, you reign over all. In your hand is power. Remember Deuteronomy 8.18. In your hand is power. And then it says, it is within your power to make great. Both riches and honor come from you. I'll be teaching very briefly on the laws of kingdom wealth and abundance, the laws of kingdom wealth and abundance. And as a foundation, there are certain things that we must know and we must understand about wealth and abundance. One of it is that all blessings come from God. Please write it down. All blessings come from God all blessings come from God number two the second thing I want you to write down please is that all blessings belong to God this is very important they look very simple and basic but we're laying a foundation all blessings come from God Number two, all blessings belong to God. He is owner, he is master, he is Lord over all, this, the Bible says. All blessings come from God. All blessings belong to God. Number three, the third foundation that we need to write is all blessings come to men through men. All blessings come to men through men so number one that all blessings come from god there's no confusion as to who makes rich god number two that all blessings belong to him remember the concept of stewardship we are not owners in this kingdom it is lack of ownership that gives you rest even in the midst of abundance if i am a steward then moreover it is required in steward the bible declares that a man be found faithful so if this belongs to him the day he makes demand i should release it with all joy because i am a privileged steward when i become an owner i can negotiate all blessings come from god they belong to god but they come to men through men are we blessed let's define 
a few things very quickly. What does it mean to prosper? The word prosper means to do well. Please write it down again. The word prosper means to do well. You are living in prosperity to the degree to which you are doing well. It does not necessarily talk about finances. Not at all. In fact, as you'll be learning, financial prosperity is only one of the dimensions of prosperity. Hallelujah. There are five dimensions to prosperity. Maybe I'll just list them quickly. Sorry, we may not have the time to deal with them so we can talk about other things. But there are five dimensions to prosperity. And in the kingdom, even if you have four over five, you still fail. You must have all five to be considered prosperous. Ready? Number one, spiritual prosperity. The first dimension of prosperity, I just want to touch on them very briefly. The first dimension of prosperity is called spiritual prosperity. The prosperity of your soul, your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what else you have, if you do not have spiritual prosperity, you are terribly bankrupt. This is the advantage we have. Ignorant people will look at those in the world and say they are better off than those in the body of Christ because they have all kinds of things. And the question I'm asking you is, have you sat down with them to know other things that they do not have? Let me tell you, one of the treasures of spiritual prosperity is peace. You will never buy peace in the market. You show me a mall that sells peace. Show me a hospital that has peace like a blood bank to sell. Show me a school that can award peace like a degree. He said, peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. Let me tell you the truth. Many people who are blessed without God do not have this treasure of peace. They live in fear. They live in doubt. The higher they rise, the more the troubles in their lives. They suspect everyone. They can't sleep. They get to a point where they tell their wife, you know what? I know we are married, but based on the lecture I received, you start sleeping in another room right now. Because my financial advisor said, don't trust anybody. What a life. And just because of the presence of things around them, we believe they are better than us. Believers, you have to know the treasure you have. One of it is peace. That you can sit in the midst of a storm and smile as if nothing is happening. A state of rest. Are we together now? The kind of blessing, the kind of prosperity that comes with sorrow is not needed in your life. Many people spend their lifetime accumulating resources, trying to hustle and push through. And by the time they really become wealthy, the world's way, their health is deteriorated, their lives, their family, every other thing aside finances has died. That was the price they paid to be rich. Then they now begin to use wealth to regain everything they lost. That's how they spend their life. That's not a wise life. Spiritual prosperity. That you get to a point where in the midst of the influence and all the millions, you still have peace with God. You know that in the midst of all these things, my hope is not just in this life. The Bible says that if our hope is only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. Most of these people fear death. You know why? Because they are not sure they will be in control after now. They are used to control. They are used to honor. They don't know what it will look like after now. But there is rest and certainty we are victorious both in this life and better when we are out of this place is a state of rest spiritual prosperity number two very quickly the second dimension of prosperity that we need in this kingdom is called mental prosperity the soundness of your mind mental prosperity Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, Paul was teaching the church in Ephesus and he had this to say, having their understanding darkened, he said, 
being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. He says, because of the blindness of their heart or their mind. So Satan has an assignment that he can blind the minds of people and make your understanding unfruitful. Let me tell you, you are prosperous to the degree to which you sustain superior belief systems. Belief systems that are beyond the realm of culture, beyond your sociological context. Renewal and transformation is wealth. I hope that we'll have the time to deal with one of the spiritual laws or one of the laws of wealth and abundance. And then you will learn that true wealth is not pursued. If you find yourself pursuing money, you've missed it already. You will never find it. Are we together? That the moment you find yourself looking for or pursuing wealth, you've started a journey that will never be complete. That there is a technology in the spirit that brings these things. Listen to me. Give a madman one billion, you didn't bless him and he will not bless you. Why? There's nothing wrong with the money you gave him. There's nothing wrong with his body. There's everything wrong with his mind. Mental prosperity is real prosperity. Mental prosperity is real prosperity. Do you know why the mentorship, sir, the reason why in Africa we are not able to reproduce wealthy people is because most people did not become wealthy by following the pathway to wealth. Their mindsets were not renewed to match the level of wealth that they stole or accumulated. So they can't defend it through their transformation. It's difficult. So if, if you say rich people stand here, they will stand because of what their bank balance is saying. But now when you ask them to speak, their understanding betrays their results. They did not get it by knowledge. They got it either by stealing respectfully speaking or by some blind inheritance. Is the reason why we don't perpetuate wealth in Africa. The Jewish people made it as a point of duty. Before you see one shekel, one naira, there is a body of knowledge that must recalibrate your thinking. In fact, if all you were given in Jewish days were physical things, it was proof that your father did not consider you great. If you were considered great, you were not given physical things. That means if your father gave you physical things as a gift, it's proof that you are other children. Are you learning something? Listen to me. The journey to transformation is real wealth. In fact, in fact, in fact, this is one of the grandest, second only to your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. This should be your primary assignment to contend for transformation. Years ago, I, I remember this story now to my shame. Years ago, I wanted to know the secret behind very wealthy people. And every time I got materials, all they were talking about was belief systems and traits. And I felt they were very wicked and unfair. What business are you doing for God's sake? What are you selling? What are you buying? Don't tell me behave well, understand honor, understand relationships. What do I, I mean, we are, we are, this is Africa. We have serious issues. What time do I have to learn? Really? Imagine that you meet me and I tell you, I'm on a journey to prosperity. So what are you doing now? I'm learning on relationships. <sighs> Your father will look at you and say, much learning makes thee mad. But how foolish I was. They were given their best. If we have time by the grace of God, we'll discuss true riches. The capital that buys money. That money itself is a product. The name of the capital that buys that product is true riches. And that may you never be so poor that all you have is money. If all you have is money, a day will come where everybody around you has the same thing. At that point, your relevance climaxes and you will never go beyond that realm. You can only use money when there are people around you who need it. But you will get to a realm where nobody around you needs money. You will need to bring another kind of currency. 
many people never get blessed enough to get to that realm so their entire theology of wealth is just cash but believe me there is a realm where money does not matter because everybody there has it you don't sell air because it's available so if you have a business that you're selling air I don't mean the one in the hospital just air to people who are alive and well you have to bring another kind of product hallelujah there are seven currencies that we use to transact with in this life the least of them is money as you know so i pray that god will grant us grace and will discuss it in the name of jesus christ so that when you leave church you can leave church even though trekking you'll be laughing like a madman and ignorant people will say something has happened to you have you the job and you say i wouldn't love this much if all i got was a job i've gotten what is greater than a job i've gotten the capital that buys money you believe what i'm telling you listen you will walk out of this conference and you wonder the ignorance of the people on the street based on what and to know you were like that before you came to church you would thank god for church for the rest of your life now you will understand what it means when the bible says i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord there is something in the house of the lord that is not found anywhere else this is what the bible calls the power to prosper God gives you the capital that buys money and says go and he's sure that you will return back rejoicing and you will play life like a chess and you watch men and women pay for their ignorance and you will thank God for God you will thank God for your pastor you will thank God for your leaders and you will quickly gather your children to say I found something let me show you there is a key mommy when are we going to get the money and you say no i don't hate you that much let me teach you what is better than money that brings you money through riches never forget this just the title alone can bless you the capital that buys money money is a product there is capital that buys it but that's not even where we're going can you imagine we are still defining terms this is spiritual prosperity then mental prosperity the third level of prosperity is called bodily prosperity your health and your physical well-being your health and your physical well-being your health and your physical well-being health is wealth is a true statement Health is wealth. There are millionaires and billionaires today whose money cannot do them much because their health is so deteriorated. Let me tell you this. You have a responsibility to take care of this body that your spirit lives in. The reason is because there is a requisite level of health that allows your spirit to remain in this body. If your body deteriorates beyond that level, the spirit will have to live. A body has now prepared bodies are prepared they don't just it is your responsibility to keep the body prepared so that you can do much for the kingdom this is prosperity we deteriorate our health we wake up early in the morning and we sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow and then at the end of it we are given naira and kobo and a few dollars and pounds and then we find out that these things do not have the power we traded we blame esau and jacob and yet we make the same mistake every day when you give your health just for money that's the same thing you did health is very important i have the privilege to pray for people i pray for the sick all the time and i am amazed pastor at how helpless money can look like in the money is only useful when there is a professional who can administer something about your health but when the doctors tell you i'm sorry you have a week to go you hold all the money and see how powerless and valueless money is ask a dying man what is your greatest request he will not say a bank a lot give me time 
the gift of health. Extend my life, Hezekiah said. Health is very important. If you are healthy, it is a blessing from God you should cherish. In Africa, I'm told that the lifespan is 48 years. We reject that result in the name of Jesus. But statistically speaking, that if you are 48 years in Africa, they begin to tell you, make sure your will is in place. Make sure if there's anything you need to tell your wife or your husband, tell them quickly. If there's something, if you need to reconcile, because they hope that you would not live long. Because we deteriorate our health, we deteriorate our bodies. Number four, the fourth dimension of prosperity is now called financial prosperity. That's what we now call prosperity. Can you see that's only one over four? Financial prosperity. Let me define for you what financial prosperity is. The absence of lack, the absence of poverty alongside the negative effects that come with them. Financial prosperity is the absence of lack. Is the absence of poverty poverty there not just meaning lack of money but the capacity to be productive so you are financially prosperous to the degree to which you have no lack in your life to the degree to which you have the availability of financial resources alongside the capacity to be fruitful and to replenish this is a word we are going to be dealing with i hope you are not truly wealthy if you do not know how to replenish even if you are fruitful replenish is where the mastery of wealth comes from fear of money leaving you dies when you can replenish Many corrupt people are not afraid of giving money because there is a corrupt system of replenishing. I can give you 10,000. I can give you 100,000 because I know how I can sign in a way that it will come back. You only fear things leaving you when you don't know how it will come back again. You know that God built our system in circles. There is the hydrogen cycle. There is the water cycle. Are we together now? Circles. There is rainy season in Nigeria, dry season. It is a system of replenishing so you can have confidence that by this time this will happen again predictability to your life the name is called replenish you will fear money leaving your business you will fear money leaving your life when you are only fruitful it's good to be productive but if you stop there you may not do much you can get to a financial equilibrium where as money is going, money is coming to the point where your harvest overtakes even your seed sowing. Replenish. May that be so for someone here. In the name of Jesus Christ. The last dimension of prosperity very quickly is called relational prosperity. Relational prosperity. Is God speaking to us already? Relational prosperity. relational prosperity what does that mean the health of your relationship be fruitful means be relational because everything multiplies on the basis of relationships everything it is your relationship with the holy spirit that provides an advantage for you in this kingdom it is your relationship with god that even secures your eternal destiny it's your relationship with the devil that destroys your life and destroys everything about you relationships are very very important at the end of your life there are things that are very important one of it is your relationships they define your possibilities in this life like pastor was sharing uh, before i came up that i i say it this way that all blessings come from god through men to men that means that if god says yes and a man says no the yes will remain in the realm of the spirit it will never manifest as yes in your life it takes both the spirit and the bride for the word to come the spirit says prosper the bride must agree with the spirit and say prosper too otherwise prosperity will not come god can say be healed but if there is no man to administer that healing the healing will remain in the realm of the spirit you need to understand that men are very important this is the world of men now 
this is where church people miss it we believe in god wonderful but we reject men to the detriment of our rising politicians understand this non-christian on they understand this you know i always give this example what would make a man fly from the u.s ladies and gentlemen and come into nigeria abuja or lagos to celebrate the two-year-old birthday of a wealthy man's a wealthy man's two-year-old baby is the baby the man's friend why fly a private jet go through that rigor while he's flying there people say sir i'm still waiting for you and he ignores all of them ask jesus who canceled crusades to meet with certain men he was on his way going for a crusade and he meets a man who is a man of influence his relationship with that man could liberate others and he says zacchaeus come down i've changed it's your house i'm going to jesus did not hide the importance of men he would finish ministering to thousands of people and then he'll be with one person or a group of people. It's only in church that we ignore people. And we ignore them to our detriment. One man can give a recommendation. You can leverage on his influence. And your prayer point of decades can be answered in a moment. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. Is God speaking to us? Yes. Notice we are not even talking of business. We are not talking of... These are the foundational truths that we must have. So when you are saying, I am prosperous, you know what you are saying. My relationship with God is intact. I continue to contend for a superior belief system. My health and my physical well-being is all right. My finances are doing well. And then I have quality relationships. Indeed, you are prosperous. If you have four over five, you are not there. Show me those without God and grade them by this understanding. And then you see that you are admiring wrong people. Just because you saw the fourth key, the fourth dimension so lavish in their lives. Most of them are afraid. They don't know who trusts them. I mean, they don't know who to trust. They don't even know who can kill them. They live with charms. They live with all kinds of things. No, he gives his beloved sleep. If I stop here this night, believe me, you have gotten something to go back home with. So that the next time someone says, I stopped coming to church because I got a job, you tell him, ah, I grade you now. I came to church and I was taught how to grade. You are not prosperous. You only have one over four. Or I just got a grant or whatever 10 million naira i don't need anybody to teach me again everything that is not represented in your mind and is in your hand will leave you it's a law it's a spiritual law everything is built twice if it's if it appears only in your hand you only held a rubber ring you go back no matter how long it looks to stay it will go back we don't secure things in our hands. No. We secure things in our mind. So if you do not sustain the belief system that makes for a prosperous life, you will find out that as an individual, you're not doing well. As a corporate organization, you're not doing well. Even though the value that you provide is there, you will still be shocked that things are not going on well. Don't worry, we are coming to issues of value, but just leave that one first five levels of prosperity can you turn it into a prayer and say lord i want to be complete i want to be prosperous indeed please everyone pray this is a very serious conference god is working on us you are praying 
Don't be tired though, this is a conference. A conference will speak and then will pray. Mention the five areas of prosperity. Allow the Holy Ghost grade you. What area have I suffered? What area have I left to suffer? From the time I started pursuing money, as you would say, my spiritual life went down. I have not contended for superior beliefs. My health is deteriorating. For some of you, you are growing spiritually. You are knowing the Lord. You are encountering God, but your finances are suffering. You are still not doing well. One more minute, pray. Skata paskata peleko dosko to prodege de balahasia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now please sit down. Please sit down. What is money? I know that this is a church that is not ignorant as far as understanding money is concerned. Um, is it alright if I bring a bill or a note just to use? I found out that this is a very effective way of making Nigerians understand this definition. No matter who is sleeping, once you bring something up, they understand immediately. This is a hundred dollar bill. Please look up. And can I use you, sir? Any one of you, come. If I give this gentleman, please hold it huh, and lift it up. If I give this gentleman, it doesn't matter what direction, you just hold it. <laughs> you like money, huh? I will report you to your pastor. Now, watch this. If this gentleman is giving this, most times we say he has money. Is that true? And he also believes he has money. Are we together? Now, tear this in pieces in your mind now I, I want want to respect this but just watch this while he's still standing remember he was happy that he has a hundred dollar now tear it drop it on the ground give it back to him what does he have why what suddenly changed you didn't clean anything on it you only altered you just tore this in six or seven places and still put it back shouldn't he be happy that you even made it easier for me to put it in my pocket so the act of just tearing this suddenly frustrates this man is this really powerful then what sort of value is this that the moment i tear it i can't do anything with it again take the ton money to someone in a shop and say i i this is not fake money i just have a careless child who while i was maybe using the restroom the child thought that this was a piece of paper and he was tearing it and said mommy see you think the shop person will say i understand you know children no he will politely dismiss you brothers and sisters understand i'm leading you somewhere what is it about this that gives you confidence one moment and just because something happened to it you become insecure immediately. Now, what if you have 20 of this and then you set it on fire and it burns? Can you carry the ashes to CBN and say, I'm an innocent Nigeria? What happened is that my gas, I gas, I don't know how this thing works. Listen, if you do not understand the accurate concept of money, you will live a very insecure life. 
so if my confidence is because this is in my pocket i'm in trouble notice when you leave your house without it you quickly run back it has the power to send you back to your house and you pick it and put it and say my soul find rest you left your house without it and you were not confident again so my, oh, so i'm sorry the moment i give you this don't talk to me like that what are you saying what is it about this thing that seems to give you so much confidence and then at the same time withdraw that confidence again this is a deliverance service happening here <laughs> ah, goodness So this gentleman, because he has this, he may not rest again. The moment he sees me, he thinks I'm aware that he has this. So he will hide it. Look what is happening to his emotions. Just because there is a piece of paper. The paper does not talk. Yet look at the evil it is doing to you. Now listen carefully. I'll tell the person, please, can you help me with And he, he's fighting a piece of paper in your pocket, controlling your life, relocating you from one region to the other. That piece of paper forces you to get a visa, whether you like it or not. This piece of paper forces you to marry somebody, whether you want the person or not. This piece of paper, as innocent as it looks, What then is money? Money. More than just a system. Look up please. There are three things you need to understand about God and the way he designed this system for you to understand money. Number one, you have to understand time. Number two, you have to understand the reward system of the kingdom. Number three, you have to understand the concept of destiny. If you do not understand these three things, you can never really understand money. The primary assignment of financial resources, primarily, the primary assignment of money is for time redemption and efficiency. Listen carefully, not, <laughs> not houses and all of that. The primary assignment of money is as a tool to help you redeem time and as a tool to make you efficient. That means that if you ever claim to have money and you are not able to use it to redeem time and your life does not become efficient, you did not use it well. more than just a system of rewarding value and that is another valid definition too why because god designed us to live in the the economic system of the kingdom thrives on a reward system are we together now yes so this is a means of settlement a means of appeasal the international banks across the world some of them are called banks of settlement a psychological word in a financial institution why because it is a system of appeasal the secret to peace is justice so if i believe that i this is a hundred dollars for instance look at this if i give you this i expect you to give me something that i consider a value that matches it a reward if you do not give me this then something is wrong we can't have peace because there is no justice so money is a tool that helps you to it's a system of appeasal and settlement are we together i'll be teaching you that one of the ways to live a peaceful life is to be rich listen it's going to be difficult to truly live a peaceful life if you are not rich. Jesus taught us how to be peaceful. He said, give to Caesar. Every time you are serving God, Caesar is going to come. And his assignment is the tribute. So he says, if you want to live in peace, there are things that belong to Caesar. Don't argue. Make sure while you are preaching, Caesar's tribute is there. So that when he comes, you will give to him. 
when you can give to caesar what belongs to caesar and to god what belongs to god you become a peacemaker i'm taking these concepts sorry for my going around with you like this it will give value when we begin to discuss a number of things and when preachers come here it will not just be i want to prosper i need a car i'm tired of trekking that definition is not deep enough to sponsor conviction the bible says redeem the time that means anything that stops you from redeeming the time is making you disobedient you must fight it there is only one reason why i hate poverty i hate poverty not because it's from the devil i hate poverty because of its effect if poverty were neutral i won't have a problem with it i hate poverty because of its effect to kingdom come to my life and to living are we together yes. time redemption so if i can trek for five hours and i can have a car that turns five hours to 10 minutes what did i do i redeemed time and if while i am in that car i have the privilege to be comfortable and to think well that is time redemption plus efficiency now it gives me the authority and the audacity to buy a good car without feeling guilty because i have i am sponsored by a higher motivation a motivation that is greater than proving a point there is a kingdom motivation so i don't feel sorry for buying a good car society this our world makes you feel guilty for prospering you prosper god lifts you you owe people explanations i'm giving you comfort by the word are we together money is not just a means of exchange of value that is a very professional financial definition but more than that money is a tool one of the most effective tools for time redemption is money you can outsource the services of others to help you to be efficient you have only 24 hours and the load in your life needs more than 24 hours so every time god brings this to your hands what he's doing is not just making you look down on others it's his way of helping you to live a very efficient life let me tell you you don't know how efficient your life can be until god truly prospers you many troubles in our families can be rounded up in one week one week of peace and settlement now, are you in agreement now but the trouble that lingers there can remain for decades you asked me to come and speak i hope i hope i hope we're all right praise the name of the lord leave business we're coming there leave value leave investments don't worry your pastor is a veteran in these areas if your motivation is soiled you will be so frustrated you will be engaging the motions and not know why you are doing what you are doing god is helping us to live very wise and efficient lives because the unit of destiny is time and whatever you give your time to you have given a portion of your life do you know spending the rest of your life looking for money is a cost are you aware of that I, I don't mean to insult your pedigree but it's true to spend money is a tool that you should have just like anointing then use it to do something if you spend your life having it what is left for you to you, you see that now money was never designed to be a lifelong pursuit there should be a time t when god grants you grace like your degree like whatever it is then you can now use it if you become wealthy at 80 you become wealthy at 90 it's not a testimony not to you not to anybody jesus finished his assignment at 33 and we have remained benefactors of the speed on his life you know there is a course in africa that i'm hoping in the course of this conference will break is the cause of late achievement when a young man prospers at 22 23 people say no 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 something is wrong 
abroad you find people in in their teens i mean with the dignity of kingdom integrity you buy a first card 40 50 days it's all right you know that's how we are while i'm speaking the holy ghost is speaking to you choose remember we, we how we started this lecture that you write down the things that lack of financial resources have cost to you what then is the pathway to wealth seeing that our lives are can be messed up by the absence of this and can be made efficient by the presence of this let me just balance another fallacy and then we'll discuss a few things no matter how much time i have will work the fallacy is believing that spirituality will automatically on its own translate into wealth and abundance that gives you stability it's a very well-intentioned truth but it's destructive that just because i have a healthy relationship with the lord jesus christ i love him with all my heart i'm a prayer warrior god forbid that i suffer my brothers and my sisters listen to me in the name of jesus and the name of honesty if you do not understand the dimensions of the kingdom excelling in one aspect of the kingdom does not replace another he said i will give you keys not a key a house has many doors if you have the key to the kitchen alone if you are hungry good for you but if you need to use the restroom and it is only the key to the kitchen you have you are still in the house but you will see how inefficient how inefficient you will be you do well in that house to the degree to which you have the keys to all the doors if you have visitors and it's only the key to the restroom you have do you put them there no so just to say i am in the kingdom and i have a key a key of prayer or a key of spirituality it will not automatically no listen i love jesus so i'm a man of prayer i'm a man of signs and wonders i didn't come from a background that taught us this it didn't give us this balance and thank god for bridging it early enough we would have been paying the price today and making nations to pay the price there are implications to ignoring other dimensions of the kingdom you are not the only one who will go down you will punish generations are we blessed for many years we were told that you forget about all these nonsense people who are carnal you just focus on god and see if he will disappoint you ah, i know people today some of them wonderful contemporaries in ministry have you seen people go to pray and then they walk around for three hours you think they are praying they are thinking the bills are killing them we have children loitering around our society today children that come from christian homes but because they ignored this dimension they trivialized it let me tell you this you know how satan attacks people he studies what you know and what you don't know then he builds the system of attack out of your ignorance the bible says no weapon fashioned weapons don't just come they are fashioned through study oh he notices that your your theology is imbalanced he can't attack you in the area of fasting he can't make you backslide because you are passionate you've gotten the key there so he will come to the areas you have ignored and build a system of attack from it most of our ladies that go into prostitution is it with poor men please talk to me in the name of honesty the hotels that they keep them do you pay for it for nothing with it for nothing some of you are in ministry here 
is until recently God began to correct that narrative. You go and carry somebody who is a preacher and take to your father. And they say, okay, my friend, what are you doing? And I say, well, the Lord called me. I'm, you know, I'm a co-laborer with God and so on and so forth. Now watch this. For a long time, it was like a scar, a demeaning scar to call upon the name of the Lord. When did answering the call become a cause? The people are sincere. They look at you and say, what, what is the meaning of what do you do? Say, I serve God. What does that mean? Listen, God can be speaking to the lady. This is the man I've appointed for you. But poverty can change that prophecy and take that lady into the hand of a, a, a devil somewhere. And we keep watching and say it does not matter. Please, for the sake of your children, listen to what I'm telling you. You ignore what I'm telling you. You will pay the price. Some of you here, you are in this city right now. I don't mean to make you feel sad. I, I, I hope you understand that I'm not... You, you get what I'm, I'm saying? As you are seated right now, your loved ones are waiting for you by any means to learn this thing and come to them because they are absolutely clueless about what to do with their lives. Let's be sincere with ourselves. This is more than an issue of car and house. It's a matter of life and death. There are people today who have gone to the grave, pastor, who had no business going there. Poverty took them like an usher, ushered them from earth to another realm. The body of Jesus was hanging on that cross. 33 year old body hanging on that cross prayer could not bring it down fasting could not bring it down it took wealth to carry the body of your jesus to bring it down was the tomb your own do you know that tomb had an owner otherwise they would have left the body of jesus outside where then would resurrection happen would you ever be able to say oh grave where is your was there ever a grave it took wealth to make a grave happen for prophecy to happen listen do not think that this is some jamboree financial prosperity conference just jumping for nothing this is with a kingdom paradigm don't reject poverty don't allow well-meaning people whether they are preachers businessmen or whatever it is don't allow anybody make you to make a poor decision to remain poor. It is not spiritual. The unfortunate thing is that it will take you a long time before you believe you are wrong. By the time you turn back to correct it, you are already a grandfather. The elderly people have wisdom, but they don't have time to correct it. Young people have time, but they don't have wisdom to make right decisions. Conferences like this match the old and the young. And gives wisdom to your time. Are you blessed? So it is God's desire to prosper us. Let me give you three reasons why God prospers. Then I'll touch on one other thing and then we're done. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. God bless you. Please pay attention. There are three biblical reasons why God prospers us in this kingdom. Number one. The first reason God prospers us in this kingdom is so that we can live a comfortable life. Please write it down. The first reason why God prospers us in this kingdom is to enable us to live a comfortable life. God is not against your comfort. In fact, let me pause here for a minute and, and mention something here. As far as the quality of living is concerned, there are four realms. As far as the quality of living is concerned, there are four realms. The first and the last is dangerous. You shouldn't be there. The first realm, which is the lowest, is called survival. As far as quality of living is concerned, there are four realms. Number one, survival. Number two, comfort. 
Number three, luxury. Number four, extravagance. Both survival and extravagance can destroy your life. Four realms of living. The least is survival, then comfort, then luxury, then extravagance. Is God speaking to us? God desires for us to live a comfortable life. Please burn it in your heart and don't feel guilty about it. God desires for me to live a comfortable life. It is his will and I believe it with all my heart. The second reason why God blesses us in this kingdom and why he prospers us is so that we can finance God's purposes on earth. To finance God's purposes on earth. To be actively involved in this project called Kingdom Come. The second major reason why God prospers and why God blesses in this kingdom is to enable us to finance God's end time agenda. In fact, God's agenda. Please look up. Did you know, sir, that in other religions, it is part of the training and the indoctrination that you must be part of fi providing finance for the kingdom agenda you understand what i'm saying that means for instance you look at other religions like islam and, and and maybe buddhism and the rest it is not a special ceremony to coerce people it's part of the training process from childhood that as you grow it is a responsibility upon you to make sure that you provide financial resources for kingdom activities that is a theology that is not taught the average believer foundationally speaking when we mentor believers immediately they give their lives to jesus christ this should be part of their training to know that supplying financial resources for kingdom activities is not something that happens during a fundraising or during a special program. It is part of the believer's responsibility. That means you don't have to wait until a special offering or a special collection. No, 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 no. I am a child of God. I am an ambassador of the kingdom. My resources should be part of kingdom come. David was so passionate about building God a house that he said, Lord, I will build you a house. Even though you are in heaven, the earth is your footstool. You don't need an earthly place, but I can't be in this palace. I can't be this. And then you don't have a house. And God said it was a good thing. But your hands have shed too much blood. I will not allow you to build. He said, still, I will gather the resources for my son to come and build. The character of love is that it gives. For God so loved that he gave. Your seeds. There are mission agencies. There are individuals. There is the house of God like this. I sat back and I watched, a, um, I think, one of the, what, what do you call it now? The, the clips. Skip him. Yes. I was so touched, I was just waving my head. Look at the joy that was on the face of those children. Listen to me. The gospel is free, but the means to take it to the lost is not free. You have to understand this. Number two, this God that we lift is very heavy. It takes resources to lift him. Oh, we lift your name high. Think about what you are saying. It takes resources to lift him high above every other God so that the nations can see. We need the availability of financial resources. Number three, very quickly. Why does God bless us in this kingdom? He blesses us to give us an opportunity to reveal the love and the compassion of the Father to a dying world. To reveal the love and the compassion of the Father to a dying world in a practical and a definite way to reveal the love and the compassion of the father to a dying world in a practical 
and a definite way. Very powerful definition. To reveal the love and the compassion of the Father to a dying world in a practical and a definite way. Please look at me. God is not only the God of Christians. He is the God of all flesh. And pastor gave a very powerful, powerful example, very powerful teaching before he went down. He said the truth is that there are people who cannot receive these true riches we're talking about. And so their prosperity and their well-being is dependent on your own obedience to God. It is difficult for God to be able to reach down to them because they do not even have the faculty to receive. So he will depend on you being prosperous and then you will reach out to them. You are the revelation of God to them. So every time God blesses me, I'm aware. This is why it came. Dr. Miles Monroe said, when the purpose of, of a thing is not known, he said, abuse is inevitable. You know the reason why people just abuse money? Because they do not know why it came. It's more than just building houses and having cars. Number one, my comfort. Number two, the kingdom. Number three, the world. God so loved the world. He didn't just love believers alone. Are we together? It is important. I learned this very early. Spare me the next 10 minutes if you can. And then let's begin to build on how God prospers. Let's do a quick recap. I started by setting a few foundations as to the understanding that governs kingdom wealth. That all wealth comes from God. And then that all wealth belongs to God. Don't forget. It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh. All wealth comes from God. So that when we are done, when you go home, you do a handover ceremony. Lord, I'm tired of taking a load that is not my own. You told me your yoke is easy. This thing on me is about to kill me. That means it didn't come from you. I relinquish ownership. Like a faithful bride, I'm comfortable with stewardship. Remain a bar. I'm tired of carrying a load that is bigger than me. Ownership is a serious responsibility. Stay away from it and focus on stewardship. You do not have the strength to manage the burden of ownership. It takes a creator to truly be an owner. The creator to be the owner. Are we blessed? Then we began to speak that to prosper means to do well. By the way, did I give you a scripture? Let me give you one. I think we should look at one scripture. Your pastor made reference to it. Psalm 35, 27. Psalm 35. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So God has pleasure in my prosperity. Remember, we dealt with five areas of prosperity. Remember, number one, spiritual prosperity involves your being born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, growing in the knowledge of the Lord. I commend you, he says, to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. If you are not growing spiritually, you are not growing in the knowledge of God, growing in love, then you are bankrupt spiritually. Number two, mentally, we spoke about that, the development of your will, emotions, intellect, sustaining superior belief systems. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, the Bible says, let this mind, the word let means to permit, permit this mind, this belief system to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. 
the bible puts it in a very interesting way it said this sign shall follow them that believe that means i know what you believe by looking at what is following you are we together now yes you don't drive what is following you you change what you believe what is following you is coming in honor to what you believe if trouble calamities disfavor all kinds of things are following you they are coming in honor to the belief system that you have you don't just cast them away there is a dimension of deliverance called deliverance through transformation deliverance is not only conducted it is preached And then bodily prosperity, your health, don't forget, freedom from sickness, diseases, yokes, and all kinds of demonic things that plague our bodies. Financial prosperity, freedom from poverty, remember, lack, and the negative effects that come. There are negative effects, jealousy, anger, all these things are effects that come with a life of financial bankruptcy. Then relational prosperity, of course. It's very important now let's discuss the economic system of the kingdom we're dealing with the laws of wealth and abundance let me just start by way of introduction and then we'll continue please whatever you have to do make that sacrifice as much as you can don't miss tomorrow's service praise the name of the lord the lord is going to be taking us from one level to the other is god lifting someone already how God blesses. This is a world that works based on knowledge. God designed this kingdom to operate based on knowledge. The Bible says, but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine why for your light is come not your light is available it's always been there but the day it comes to you amplify it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new life for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you then it says for darkness shall cover the earth same word used in Genesis chapter 1, tohu wa bohu, confusion and chaos, and gross darkness, the people. The people are darker than the earth. Darkness is upon the earth, but upon the people is gross darkness. Then it says, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Then it says, Gentiles shall come. Hallelujah. Gentiles shall come. Not to you, not to you, not to you, not to you. They kept passing you when you didn't have light. They didn't come to you. There is something that will make them pay attention to you. It's called light. It's a product, light. Gentiles shall come to your light. While the Gentiles are coming, their arrogant kings have light, so they won't come immediately. They will keep studying you. But a time will come, like the queen of Sheba, they will be compelled to see the excellency of your rising. They come not to your light, the brightness of your rising. Light is powerful. Please listen to me. The moment the light of God comes, liberty comes. The moment the light of God comes, enlightenment comes. John 1, 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Oh, light is powerful. Believe me, light is powerful. Psalms 82 and verse 5, very powerful scripture. They know not, the Bible says, neither will they understand. It says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some, all of you are children of the Most High. The tragedy, next verse, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. We must trust God for light, illumination by the Spirit. Are we blessed? So what you are about to learn now, in the next... Do I have 10 minutes, sir? Okay. Please let me 10 minutes. I apologize already.
You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life must change. I will never be the same. I've touched His grace. Life One more time, change. prophesy to yourself. I will never be the same. I've touched His grace. My life must change. The day I found these truths, I cried like a baby. I cried like a baby. I rolled before the God of my salvation. I waved poverty goodbye. And I was shocked it waved me back. I'm sorry if it sounds arrogant. But it is knowledge that gives you stability. What you are about to learn, listen to me. It is not an opinion. This thing I'm teaching you now is older than us. We didn't invent it. We only found it. Jeremiah 6.16 says, stand in the way. It says, ask for the ancient paths. It says when you have found it, walk in it, you will find rest for your soul. These are the truths, brothers and sisters, that the patriarchs in the Bible walked with. These are the truths that non-Christians who will not profess Jesus are still walking in it. I give you a guarantee by the God of heaven. If you pay attention to these truths you are learning, then you are on a flight that will never go down again. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? There are laws that govern wealth and abundance. They are called kingdom laws. The economic system of the kingdom is based on laws. Please pay attention. Precepts and laws that if we walk in keeping with these spiritual truths they sustain the ability to lift us to realms beyond the reach the limitations of poverty and so on and so forth deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 1 it shall come to pass the bible declares if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day it leaves you with a blessing that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that this blessing will come upon you and will overtake you hallelujah for a very long time, there has been an age-long fight between businessmen and pastors. Let's do a reconciliation service in one minute. Business people claim that pastors and ministers of the gospel only focus on giving, tithing, and so on and so forth, and tell people to prosper. And in truth, many people have done these things and it doesn't seem like the kind of prosperity they desired came to them. And then, here we have business people who say, forget about all those nonsense pastors are teaching you. You just come and learn principles here and there. And all of them in one way or the other have results to show. Are we together? The reason is because two of them are holding different sides of the same coin. Please look up. That when it has to do with wealth and abundance, it's a combination of spiritual laws and natural laws. They all together are called the kingdom laws of wealth and abundance. Are we together? So the laws of wealth and abundance are divided into two. There are spiritual laws. Please take note. There are spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. And then there are natural laws or business laws or physical laws. The assignment, let me tell you this. Listen, the assignment of the spiritual laws is to guarantee the safe arrival of financial resources. That's it. 
then the physical laws are responsible for the management and the multiplication of those resources if you know only the spiritual laws you will keep having testimonies once in a while but you will still be poor you will not get to that point where you can perpetuate wealth because the spiritual laws listen to me they ensure the arrival and the insurance the security of financial resources but when you want to perpetuate wealth and step into the dimension the bible calls the wealthy place leaving an inheritance for your children and your children's children you will have to understand the natural laws are we together so let me deal with the spiritual laws i'll just pick one for tonight and then we'll continue remember kingdom laws are divided into two as far as financial prosperity is concerned there are the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance there are the physical laws so let's start with the spiritual laws the first spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance <laughs> is not giving please look up the first spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance is not tithing the first spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance is called the law of absolute surrender now if you do not understand this and you do not put it in this order it may not profit your knowledge the law of absolute surrender first kings chapter 3 please the whole verse for study is from verse 3 to 14 but we may not have all the time so let's just look at maybe verse 3 and 4 look up please the bible says and solomon loved the lord many times we think about his giving the thousand bond offerings he gave his encounter with god and the blessings that followed but the bible says solomon it talks about his relationship with god walking in the statutes of david his father i have discovered pastor that for people to be wealthy and still be relevant the first law is the law of absolute surrender where everything you have your life your wealth your intellect is poured like a drink offering if that does not happen i don't care what else you obey there will be a side effect in the future proverbs 23 and verse 26 proverbs 23 please take it high for me proverbs 23 26 let's read together please one two three four five six the first six words ready one to read my son give me not your offering not your tithe not your business idea leave that one i want your heart because i designed the heart to host god so everything that is in your heart is your god no matter how you pretend it not to be there let me tell you this when your heart truly belongs to the lord when he looks at it he should reflect him back he should see himself but every time he looks at your heart he sees a business idea he looks at your heart he sees something else this is a secret that the lord taught me why is it that many people keep laboring they have all kinds of they have the shop okay you said i should sell buy and sell something and i will increase now i have a shop and it looks like i'm struggling when god can find the heart of a man you read your bible and see what god did to men who gave him everything i hope you know that when you get saved you didn't really give god your life the theological explanation is that you received his life you give god your life when you are ready to be used by him not when you are saved i know we say it i give you my heart god understands what we are saying but i'm telling you in truth surrender when your heart is with him god can say transfer that 10 million and you say lord it was always yours the last treasurer betrayed him god is still looking for treasurers they replace many of the apostles not the treasurer god is still looking for men today 
who will he said his bishopric let another take the bible never says paul was a treasurer he came as an apostle god is still looking for stewards i'm telling you there are dimensions of wealth and abundance we are yet to see god is looking for men and women do you know the reason why you trust banks i'm wrapping up you trust banks because of one simple explanation ease of withdrawal that's it the reason why you trust banks is because at any time of the day you can slot your atm and your ten thousand will come out if the bank cannot give you your money if you become like that atm god will no longer have a problem whether the money is with him or is with you it means the same thing ease of withdrawal are we together now yes sir that everything god gives me including my life this encounter message is about wealth oh, not even just about surrender or ministry are you seeing where a lot of people miss it so many times we teach about prosperity and there are people full of carnality and lust in their heart just wanting money they can kill for money they can betray for money they can leave god for money just give me the anointing for money they say show me the business idea but that lust and that corruption god says not my way if it's my way you must die first to leave this we are discussing wealth God is able to trust your pastors with the resources and the influence he's given them because he's found out that whether it's with them or it's with him, he's still glorified. Please listen very carefully. It's a big secret I have found with God. If you don't give God your heart, you have not started doing anything with him. Many of us bribe God. We come and give God a seed or give God something. And then our lusts are still piling up there, waiting for money to activate them. Do you know why God needs your heart? Because this money you see, there is a spirit behind it. If your heart is not surrendered to God, prosperity will tear you into pieces. By the time you become so prosperous, you may not see the need to study scriptures again. What for? When you almost don't have any prayer point again. You have a personal security system, a personal doctor, multiple citizenships, bank accounts and investments scattered around the world. Then we may become like the rich fool. My soul found fine rest. And he says, today, that heart you refuse to give me, today. Listen to me, believers. The excellency of the entrustment of kingdom wealth in our lives it's not only dependent on business ideas and all of these things is that god can find a people who love him so passionately people who love him that anything at all i continue to pray this prayer all the time pastor that anything god will ever give me that i would not be able to give him back or use it for his glory may it never come to me Minister Freke Omo sang a song that really blessed me. It's been an anthem for me of worship. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hands, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. There are people who betrayed the Lord because he prospered them. There are gospel ministers who came and rode before the church altar. They received impartations and prophecies. The moment influence began to rise, they said, God, I suspect you are a nuisance to my rising. You wait until the day I need you. There are business people who that circumcision did not happen to. 
there are even preachers who that circumcision did not happen to before god starts with you he says i don't trust you until my your heart is in my hands influence can destroy you know what it means when you get to a point where human beings are I on water you worship me because of it and god is saying before you become an embarrassment to yourself let's deal with it here i don't have a problem lifting you i don't have a problem prospering you one connection i can bring to your life can wipe your family's tears forever listen to me there are people here we're wrapping up but the holy spirit is speaking to you it's not because god cannot lift you it's not because abuja is a good land nigeria is a good land africa is a good land there are people who stumbled into prepared blessings because their hearts were already prepared before the lord there is something i know about god when god decides to shake himself to lift you you yourself will be the first spectator to your miracle you scriptures exalt us god from the book this. of proverbs it says my son Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart, that no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you